Hello, my name is Michael Proper. I work with an organization called Clear Center. And today we're announcing the new product release of the new contentfiltering.net application for ClearOS. I'd like to introduce David Redekop, who actually has helped to make this thing a reality, and him and many other folks. Um, and we're excited to be able to bring it to the world. So David Redekop joins us from Canada. That's right. And he's visiting here in Utah to do this announcement, which is very important. For many years, we've been working on this um, and just super excited to learn from hundreds of thousands of deployments over the years, but particularly watching the last year of this thing being in test and really changing how content filtering has been done and brought to the world from a very different paradigm. Uh, it doesn't use a lot of the same processes or processes that historical blacklist, whitelist type technologies do. And we look forward to talking a little bit about the details in further videos. But for now, we want to talk about the availability of this product, how to get it, where to get it, how to buy it, how to sell it, how to make money on it. So without further ado, again, David Redekop, this has been his brainchild for a very long time, many, many years. I'll just uh, let him talk a little bit more about it. Thanks for joining in. Yeah, thank you, Michael. It's uh, been quite an exciting journey, and uh, we find ourselves very often in a situation where others run businesses, have families, and they all seem to have the same and same common concerns. We uh, are scared of ransomware. We're uh, concerned that we're going to be caught in a phishing attempt. And you know what? In general, there's a lot of stuff online that we simply don't want to show up on our screens. And so over the years, the technologies have been quite broad in general, but we're very excited about the development of a product that is a whole lot easier to use than anything we've encountered in the past. And it's designed with a lot of machine learning, with a lot of automation, and quite simply, just to make the problem go away with the least amount of inconvenience. So the way that it's actually deployed is really intelligent, where you basically have the on-premise versus the off-premise and the connection to the internet via a some type of an internet provider. So you would plug a hardware device. It could be, it could be a physical uh, full-on server or a wireless device, and then connect different users up to it, whether they're on PDA, a laptop, a desktop, you name it, it can even work for televisions. We'll talk a little bit more about that. It can even work for little inter internet of things, so devices or fridges, toasters, you name it. Anything that's connected behind this device. And what's unique about it, instead of trying to do all the calculations here, there's actually a service where it's, and I'll let David tell you about this because it's, it's one of the most exciting points of it, where the whitelist comes into play. So this is the architecture. So you have one physical device that's on premise, and we'll talk more about those. And then that connects to an actual administration console remotely. So David, if you want to tell us about whitelist, I think that'd be fine. Yeah, absolutely. So our approach is to take the traditional paradigm where we literally operate in the world with this ideology of allow all and block some. And then we have to come up with ways to say, this is no good, that's no good, block that. And that just became a rat race and the bad guys, all they have to have is a little bit of a lead and this idea of fighting the bad is uh, not sustainable, and it's really a runaway problem. So the paradigm shift is the opposite. Instead of allow all block some, think of it as block all and allow some. So you basically start with no access whatsoever, and then make a conscious decision about what should be allowed. Those whitelists are effectively crowdsourced, machine learned, uh, we use crawlers, all sorts of technologies in the cloud, but we bring those whitelists onto the device itself. And so that way you get the advantage of really, really fast performance. It doesn't go to the cloud to check to see if your current website is whitelisted because it's already here. But if you add one, it gets added there and then pushed back down here. So the whole hybrid approach of having intelligent on-premise software with intelligent cloud controller is what makes this possible. And what, what's massively different about it, most, almost every single content filter except for this one out of every review that I've ever looked at, slows down the internet experience. So it actually slows down 
because it has to check where is this going, is this available, is this approved. And the disruptive nature of this particular app is it actually speeds it up. Because right now, I'd say 40 to 50% of all of our browsing traffic is actually touched by other third party remarketing firms, adwords, um, other things that are really have no business with what we're trying to actually search or use the internet for. And so not only the ability to be able to uh, not be slower or slow down or add weight to the user's experience, but it actually speeds it up is very, very valuable and disruptive in the whole content filtering world. So I think that's that's also important. And in the, the importance of being able to do it from a centralized list where maybe you have location A and B. So let's call this location A, and then we bring in another location B, and on this one we're actually gonna do a little wireless access point instead of a full-blown, what we call an x86-fold system. Um, and then it can have its own users that are connected up to it wirelessly. So from location B, you can still manage location B and A, even though they've been deployed with totally different technology. Wireless router-based technology versus full-blown file server. So think about this like in a business environment and this in a home, one architecture, one delivery mechanisms to manage it. Both of those topics are very, very disruptive in the filtering world. And this is only the top of the iceberg. Check back for future videos on specifics on how to learn how to use it, learn how to sell it, and learn what the options are available.